the first thing that probably comes to mind whenever you hear of a Trek Roscoe is a dirt-eating, monster, aggressive trail bike. And you'd be right, but is it still worth it here in late 2023? Well, I'm going to help you decide today. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of the major pros, the cons, and also some things that you might want to upgrade right out of the box. As well as at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about who this bike is for. If you're not already familiar with this bike, I'll be sure to leave a couple review videos down below from other channels. First, let's list some of the major pros and cons I found with the Trek Roscoe 7. Starting with the pros, this bike comes with a UDH Universal Derailleur Hanger. This is a huge pro. If you're not familiar with what a UDH is, it's basically a derailleur hanger that can accommodate any frame with that style of fitting. So another huge pro compared to any other bikes that I've seen is this bike comes tubeless from factory. You heard me. If you're not familiar with what tubeless is, it's basically whenever we put sealant or sort of slimy stuff inside of our tires instead of tubes. And whenever you get a puncture, it will stop up the hole. Unless you have a tube big enough hole, then you'll have to use a baking strip. I'm not gonna go too into detail on that. It has some pretty nice valves over here. And these wheels are laced up to these Von Trager XR4 Team Issue tires. They're not my favorite by any means compared to what I have ridden on, but these tires are pretty grippy. I have seen a lot of people choosing these tires as their main option for mountain biking. If you've ever heard of a dropper post, you might be like, well, Nate, that's on higher end mountain bikes. This is just like a mid-tier mountain bike. No way it has a dropper post. It sure does. The Trek Roscoe 7 comes with a Trans X dropper post. I think it has around 170 millimeters of travel on the dropper. And this is a huge pro because you can drop the seat down, move your weight side to side, back, and keep your weight balanced to do tricks and also jumps and drops. The next pro of this bike lays just beneath the chain ring. This chain ring, I'm not sure what it is, but beneath it is a ICSG05 mounting plates for a bash guard and for a chain guide. I do not have either one installed, but I find this very, very useful in case if I did want to install it. I have found that none of the bikes of this price range come with these mounting plates for bash guards and for a chain guide. So I think it's pretty cool that Trek added that on to this bike. Well, that's about it for all the pros I had about this bike. So let's head on over to the cons. So one of the cons that a lot of people see of this bike are these Shimano MT200 brakes. Now, whenever I first got this bike, these brakes were awesome because I came from a budget entry level mountain bike that had mechanical disc brakes and they were crap. As I progressed, I found out that these brakes, they just didn't have enough power. In the front, we have a 180 rotor and in the rear, we have a 160 rotor. They're only two pistons, so you aren't really gonna have that much braking power. In the near future, I would highly, highly recommend upgrading to a set of maybe Shimano XT or SLX four piston brakes. The first thing that probably comes to mind whenever you hear of a hub of a mountain bike is, well, it's probably supposed to hold your entire wheel together. These hubs are some sort of Shimano hubs. I think they're like MT500 hubs. They're boost. I liked them for a little while whenever I first got the bike, but over time, the bearings in the hub have gone loose. That's a pretty big con in my opinion, because as I mentioned, a hub is what holds your entire wheel together. All right, so the next con is definitely my most concerning one. Oh, let me just show you. I never spray my bikes with high pressure water whenever washing them. The paint around the bottom bracket, I can just see the slightest little like chippage. And I'm not really sure who installed the bottom bracket. It was someone from a bike shop. Maybe they tightened it up too much. I'm not really sure. Not really sure how that happened again. Maybe it was my fault, but I just added it to the con list just because I was a little bit bummed out about it. That's about it for all the pros and cons on this bike. So let's scoot right over to all the upgrades I'll consider doing. These are the grips that came on the Roscoe whenever I bought it and they're absolute junk. After about four or five rides, they just wear away so much. There's rubber all over your hands after every single ride. 
So I'll consider grabbing a set of lock-on grips. I'll leave a couple good pairs linked down below. They're all below like $30, so they're great value. Some bikes like this one come with pedals from factory and they are not the best. I'll consider grabbing a new set of pedals that have metal pins and not these plastic ones that will wear away over time. These are $180 DD T-Mac pedals that I got for free from DD, so shout out to them. If you do wanna buy these pedals, I'll have a link down below, but if I had to guess, you're probably not gonna to want to. So I'll leave a couple pairs that are below $30 that are a good option, link down below as well. As we all know, this bike comes with a dropper seat post and a dropper seat post has to have a dropper remote. Now, the dropper remote that came on this bike is this one right here. Uh, it's off the bike because I upgraded it. And we're gonna talk about why you should upgrade the dropper post lever. A drop post lever is something that you want to always be comfortable with. It's really all about what you prefer. The one that will come on your Roscoe, you get inside of a crash, this thing will just snap right off. But one that I would recommend, I believe it's like $70, uh, is this Wolf Tooth Remote Pro drop post lever. I'll also leave a couple other options that are below $50 if you're interested as well. If you're riding in harsh or muddy conditions, you might want to consider a mud guard for a number of reasons. A mud guard basically keeps mud from being on your tire and it basically flicks it into the underside of the mud guard instead of flicking it up into your face. I feel like this is a good upgrade and the pro is about this is it's only around 15 bucks. But now it's time to decide if this bike is still worth it here in 2023. And I've got to say, it's so-so, but if you're looking into getting into the higher end of mountain biking, I'll definitely suggest it and I'll definitely recommend it. You might be seeing a couple more bike reviews coming very, very soon to the channel. But guys, I think that's pretty much gonna be a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. We'll catch you guys on the next one.